so what I will do now is I will open waveforms. And as you can see, the my PC has detected that I have both the ADP3450 and the Discovery 3. The Discovery 3, um, I've just laid my hands on it a few days ago. I have to say it is a very, very nimble and amazing little product. Um, it is extremely useful, especially when you have limited space and you want to carry it around with you, especially if you're studying. It is an amazing tool and its capabilities are just as good as the ADP3450 and I would suggest it to anyone, anyone from students to professionals. So I will for now choose the ADP3450, which uh, is going to be our main oscilloscope and I will open the scope section. I will switch off all the channels except for channel one because I have my, I, I have my input on channel one. And we can go ahead and run that in reality. So when we go here on this taskbar, we have the option of the filters. The, the filters here, we can simply switch them on by pressing that button. And we have our settings right here. So we have an FIR or, or an IIR filter. Something very important to note. Uh, and, and the difference between FIR and IIR filters is the phase shift. Uh, an FIR filter has has its phase phase shift properties that it will sh sh phase shift your waveform um, by some some margin. Uh, IIR filters tend to, to be advantages in in the the phase domain because they do not have this 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 phase shift properties. So one important thing to always keep in mind is that when you are FIR filtering your signal, at the output you are going to get some degree of phase shift. We, I will also be going through this and analyzing this in some detail later on in this video. So basically we have our scope set up, we have our first channel and our filter which is going to act on the on the first channel. Now we need to output our filtered waveform. So from the wave gen option, we can go and choose the filter option. And I will output it as, as 100% amplitude. So this is, this is also a very good feature because you can output also half your amplitude. So if, let's say you have a system and your amplitude is not what you want it to be. Here you are able to input it and output the same waveform with a different amplitude. This is very advantageous. And I will go ahead and run that. So what will happen is that this input here will be filtered and it will be visualized right here on this orange line. And then it will be outputted using these settings. You can also apply an offset right here. So I will keep my ADP waveforms open right there, and I will open another waveforms so I can connect to my analog discovery tree. Remember, um, I will be using my analog discovery tree instead of my system on test. So basically, I will set up the scope with channel one for for the analog discovery tree. Here is where we, we will be seeing this filtered waveform output it from the ADP3450. So we can confirm that everything is working as it should. I will now open my wave generator and we will output a one kilohertz sine wave with an amplitude of one volts for now. Here, as you can see, wave the ADP3450 immediately detected the signal. So it is always important to level our our um, uh, waveforms. Now I will explain exactly why this is. So what can we see here? We can see that we have our waveforms. This is our filtered one, and this is our our input one. So we are expecting to see this filtered one outputted right here. 
through the ADP 3450 back to the to the ADP. And that is exactly what we can analyze here. This is the waveform we are analyzing right here. This is the filtered version of our signal using this this filter. So, in order to confirm that everything is is well, so what we will do now is that we will confirm that what we are seeing is actually this this waveform. So, as you can see, the when we remove the change the settings from here, we are changing them on the output because this is the output of the ADP 3450 as analyzed by the analog discovery tree. So we have now confirmed that uh, we are seeing the output of the filtered output of our input. So let's let's run a small analysis. So let's start increasing our frequency. So I have now outputted a 500 kilohertz signal. So let me put the waveforms on top of each other. And now we can immediately start noticing the effects of the filter. Even though we don't have a considerable amount of attenuation, by looking at this, we know that the filter is working. Why is this? Because we can see our first signs of phase shift. That means that our FIR filter is is running as it should and it is filtering the signal. Not only this, we can see the amount of phase shift that we have. And this is very, very interesting and very important. Besides this, we have the option to input custom filters. So we can test our filters from whatever design we are we are doing. So increasing further the frequency of the input of the ADP 345 hour frequency of our signal. Now we we can start to see two things: more phase shift, and we are start to getting to get some attenuation. So let me increase even more the signal. And we can see that we are very close now to 180 degree phase shift together together with a considerable amount of attenuation. Our signal is now being attenuated. If we go here, we should we are expecting to find this same signal right here. So let's miss it. This is we have confirmed here that our output is following the, the filtered output, which is this orange line right here. Now, what we can do is we can modify our settings in order to get uh, what 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 we want. So let's say that th this phase shift is uh, not ideal to us. We don't want this phase shift. So what we can do is we can switch to an IIR filter. As you can see, I will give it some 100 kilohertz for now, so we can analyze better. We will put those there so we can analyze better. So as we increase the frequency, we'll see that the IAR filter is capable of tracking even more. Some phase shift will always be present. However, the IAR filter's properties, phase phase properties, are much much better than the than the FIR filters one. Much much better. And here we can start noticing the attenuation of this IAR filter. Once again, we can also um, uh, change our, our settings. We can 
further reduce the cutoff frequency. And here you can see, you can also set our order um, and we can also change our cutoff frequency. So here our cutoff is around three megahertz. We can give it two megahertz and we can see that we are getting the same the same signal as as we expect that we are getting so i'll put that there now on the problem that we have that is like the other one so basically in this way we can very easily very easily analyze the signal filter it and output it from the ADP, that same signal from the AD with all of its properties, uh, just a filtered version of it. And uh, using this, this functionality, we can very easily modify and test our circuits. And it, it is a very useful thing to have, especially when you are designing in analog electronics and you are trying to read some analog signals using a microcontroller or some kind of of digital platform additionally a very good use for this is for filter design because we can uh, both digital and analog filters digital because we can very easily test our filters especially the fir filter from here uh, these are our, are our coefficients we just apply and uh, there we have the fir filter and we can also uh, test analog filters because we can also feed um, signals that are unfiltered through the ADP, um, give them, uh, apply a filter, and we can analyze if that signal if that signal is similar to our design or no. I hope that uh, you found this video interesting, and uh, I hope that you you learned at least a bit about the ADP 3450's um, um, capabilities and uh, its its usefulness when it comes to design and testing of, of, of whatever your systems are. Thank you.